Welcome to Way Back When with your hosts, Lisa and Nancy. Hey, everybody, it is time for our third Friday family history show, our, part of our Way Back When history show, where your hosts, Nancy Reed and Lisa Smith, the mother daughter travel team on the Love Your Parks tour and publishers of Big Glen Radio and TV Magazine, as well as Parks and Travel Magazine. And Third Fridays, always dedicated to family history. And it's something that unites us all is finding out who were our ancestors, what did they do, finding out more about ourselves through that. And uh, we love to do that every Third Friday, uh, especially with Miss Holly T. Hansen, the Gen Teacher. Holly is the president of Family History Expos. Uh, you can go to her website, familyhistoryexpos.com. She's an author, she's a podcaster, videographer, all kinds of good stuff, all to do with family history. And she helps people trace their family history as well. And she's also an expert for our Big Blend radio and TV magazine. And when it comes to Roots Travel, uh, Parks and Travel magazine, today she is joining us to talk about what are in, you know, you find a stack of letters from your family, maybe they were love notes, hot and steamy love notes. It could Ooh. be, uh, yeah, it could be letters from jail. You never know like what you're going to find jail. in the attic, cool. right? <laughs> uh, so she's going to join us today to talk about how these letters can actually help us trace our family history. So welcome back, Holly. How are you doing, Miss Jen Teacher? Hey, I'm happy and glad to be here. And I heard that comment about letters from jail, and it reminded me of one of my <laughs> ancestors who spent some time. And when I got the record from the from the prison, it had a ledger with every piece of mail the whole time he was incarcerated. It was oh, wow. every person that ever wrote a letter. I had their name, oh. which is exciting. It gives you more names to, to look at to see. I didn't actually get to see the letters. There were some letters in, the, in his file, you know, with his record that um, mm -hmm. I could read, but most of the, most of those personal letters they weren't kept by the, you know, in with his prison record, but. Um, Getting the names though, that's you helpful. You never know, you never do, know. Do you take people's names you. and Google their names or like, do you, that's, this is a question. Yeah, you get these names and, you know, in history, like, oh, so-and-so kept writing back and forth to each other. So you see there's some kind of relationship going on. Yeah, you, maybe who are they? I, I always track them down. I can't stand it. It's like, how did they know them? <laughs> who are they and where are they from? And you uncover a lot of connections that way. So even if you don't get the letter itself, you get the name. And one of the things that's really cool in the early times, the post office used to print, you'll see this in the old newspapers, a list of letters. And that's how people found out they had mail. They'd post it and oh. then they'd go into the post office and get their mail because they lived out in the boonies somewhere. And so you can see that so-and-so had a letter. And that helps you identify that your family was in a certain area at a time. And so I'm always intrigued to find, you know, track people down and see who they are and what's going on. Oh, wow. And you, you find relationships that you didn't even know were possible. It's pretty cool. There could be people having affairs or it could be that they had a child that you didn't know about and the rest of the family didn't know oh, about. Well. <laughs> well, I mean, there's scandals. Yeah. You have, I, mean, I found things like that. I have. I found things like that. See, see, I'm not. Yeah, I know. It's yeah. funny. Yeah. Well, that's how you find the rest of your relatives. You never know, you know. Yeah. But but when you find the name, so what is your first thing when you find like a name? Um, do you, you know, use those programs like you can look at, you know, find out, you know, their criminal records or whatever. There's those background checks and whatever. Do you use those or do you go to Google or do you go to like? You well, it it really depends on the time period. The background checks that you do today are more for modern today records. Yeah. If you're looking for some something more historical, you, um, you you're going to go to the archives that hold those records. You know, like my ancestor spent time in Leavenworth, mm -hmm. and this was in the early early 1900s, and it was a it was a precedent setting case where he was convicted of defrauding using the mail to defraud oh, so he wow. mailed a certificate he mailed a certificate through the postal service and in court they said the certificate was not legitimate so they sentenced him to prison because he mailed a certificate that wasn't legitimate 
I mean, he didn't do any big, terrible, heinous thing, but he... Um, oh, he used them as a vehicle. And that's when this defrauding, using the mails became a new thing that people could be convicted of. And my huh. ancestor was one of the first people to be convicted of that. Wow. And so he spent some time in Leavenworth, oh which is gosh. kind of cool. So, <laughs> so if someone, yeah, but, but if, if someone gets in trouble for so smuggling drugs, right, or anything, and it, and it goes through the Postal Service, I, you're going to get in trouble from the Postal Service for using, misusing the Postal it's Service. A, you know, yeah, it's a federal offense, and you'll go down, you bet. Wow, well, I'm glad I've never done yeah. that. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> I yeah. know people who have. But Be careful what you mail, because yeah, if, yeah. You, and, if you use the mail to send something illegal or to defraud someone, you will go to federal prison. And be careful what you Very open, everybody. Yeah. Just be careful. Don't always <laughs> open it up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the other part. So, yeah, this is interesting, you know, finding these names, even if you don't get a hold of the letter, the names. Um, so one thing, you've got an article up and everyone, you can see it up on Blend Radio and TV.com and in Big Blend Radio and TV magazine, the uh, spring issue uh, for February, March, early spring issue, I should say. Um, in some places, it's not spring in February and <laughs> March. Uh, you talk about military personnel. Uh, that has got to be an important part because, you know, writing from war, if someone's in war and, and you know, husband and wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, um, mothers and child, you know, that kind of thing. Um, you're finding out about where they are. Sometimes people end up living where they served too. So that's an interesting thing right. to find out. Right. I have, a, I have a collection of letters that my father wrote um, to my mother, she saved them all. Now, I don't know what happened to letters she wrote him. I guess he didn't save them, but mm -hmm. the ones he wrote to her, she saved them. And they're both still living. I was over at their house one day, and um, dad said, all oh, these are junk. I'm going to throw them away. And I said, well, I, I'd like them. He <laughs> says, well, you can't read them until I die. I'm like, okay. So I put them in a <laughs> file, and they're in my file. I haven't read them yet, but I have them, and I'm tempted, you know, but I really, I did promise I'd wait. <laughs> so we'll see when I when I actually read them but I think that's going to be very fascinating to know part of his history because he would have been telling mother the things I might go ask him for permission again because I, I'm mm -hmm. getting more curious you know and he's now he'll be 93 this year and there might be things in there I want to ask him questions about exactly. if I wait until he's gone it will be too late so I might exactly. have to uh, renegotiate that agreement but um <laughs> I have seen letters in in uh, pension files at the National Archives where um, a widow is is applying for a widow's pension, and to prove that she was married, she will send a letter that he wrote while he was in the military that proves that she's his wife, and there it stays in. They'll say, please return this letter, and it never goes back. It stays in the pension file. Wow. And back in the day before we had copy machines and things like that. So I've seen some real fascinating things in, in pension files from the American Revolution time period. You know, mm -hmm. some of this stuff's really early and um, you never know what you're going to find until you look. Can you imagine waiting so long for a letter? I mean, here we are with now, not even email, now texting. And back in the day, you have to wait for the Pony Express or somebody to hand carry or walk or be on horseback to mm -hmm. take the mail across or maybe a train. So you're talking two to three, maybe four weeks before you'd get urgent. <laughs> right. you know? I have a letter. I have a letter. It's a copy that was my great, great grandmother. She uh, joined the... Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in New York and mm -hmm. she went to Nauvoo and ended up coming across the plains with that whole movement when they came to Utah back in the 1840s mm -hmm. and I have a letter that her sister wrote to her and they were born in, and raised in, Wisconsin, in, in New York but the sister married and went to Wisconsin but she wrote a letter to my, to my grandmother to my ancestor and told what all the family was doing and where they were and who had died and what was going on. And I just think my grandmother never went back. You know, she never saw them again. She never mm -hmm. got to see her siblings again. And that letter was saved and because it was so special to her, you know. And I think there, there are those things out there. I have a collection of Christmas cards that a different great-great-grandmother had 
received from her children and they, they got saved and my aunt had them and she brought them to me. She goes, I just don't know what to do with these, but they're so old. Mm -hmm. And I photocopied them all, the, the beautiful artwork of the card and then the inside, the writing. And we published a little book just for the family so everyone could have a copy of the, of the cards. But it gives family history. And, and that, those were saved for a hundred and something years. Oh, wow. And That's those amazing. early Christmas cards are works of art. I mean, they're just yeah, they are. amazing, beautiful mm -hmm. things. And so um, you never know. You never know what, yeah. what you're going to find. And the letters that are out there, uh, there's, you know, we've watched documentaries. I'm sure you've watched documentaries on the Civil War. Mm -hmm. And they're reading out of journals and letters that were written to mm -hmm. a, you know, a young man to his mother saying, and then he dies and never comes home. And those, those are treasures that are kept forever. And mm -hmm. a lot of us have them in our family. We just don't know they exist because one of the other mm -hmm. descendants got them. But I'm always looking for things like that as I do research. That, that's what's I'm interesting to me about, like you know, that. family history. We want to know who our ancestors were, but more, you know, it's like, oh, how much, you know, how much are we similar to them and our traits versus theirs and or connect the connectivity. And it's really about, you know, tracing your roots, finding out more about who you are as an individual. But then you want to have that feeling of knowing more than the number, you know, this is where they come from. Here's that you want to know them, you know, and since they're your ancestors and passed on, unless you want to, you know, hire a psychic or something, <laughs> you know, you want to I'm just saying, you know, this is a way to get to, you know, reading a letter, understand how they communicate and uh, the time, that era that they were living in, were they using, you know, a quill when they wrote this, you know, were they using, you know, a ballpoint pen, depending on the era. And, you know, there's that right. feeling of who they were as an individual you know, and I think even it do, are there like business letters that people can look for in specific places like, you know, property, I'm giving you this or I hire you or I fire you, you know, that kind of thing. You know what? The court records are full of those all the time. People would give um, power of attorney and it's a letter that's written and it's signed by all of the heirs. Like I have one for um, Benjamin Guest an ancestor who his his father-in-law had died and the mother then his mother-in-law had died and they were settling up some land and it was owned in another county you know several counties away and all of the brothers and sisters who had an interest in it this is his wife's brothers and sisters they give him power of attorney and it's called to my next best friend so you when you read that in a document you realize he's someone that's important to the family but he's not in line to inherit mm. so his wife could inherit but he's not inheriting but he has this letter and it has all their names and signatures and he goes over to this other county and takes it sells the land and collects the, the monies and then takes it back well the part that's interesting for this one on benjamin guest and he was in georgia but the burke burke county georgia the courthouse burned but there was an interest in land in another county. And when you find that document over there, there it is with the relationship and all the children that you, you couldn't find the original that was in the Burke County Courthouse because that courthouse burned it there. It was yeah. still in existence in another county. And it showed who the names of all the children in the family. Wow. And the reason I knew who Benjamin was, I knew Benjamin because he was my ancestor and he was married to a Sarah. Well, she's listed in the paper as a child, and there's all her siblings. So I didn't know who her parents were, or I didn't know who any of her siblings were. And because of this one little document that had his name on it, I found in an unusual place. Wow. <laughs> you know, I was able to figure out who all of her brothers and sisters were and who her parents were. Wow. In in 1700s, it's amazing. And so, yeah, those kind of things they're in they're in court records, they're in pension files. You find things like that in wills, um, hmm. in military records. People write affidavits. It's a letter. They'll say, "I knew this guy for 20 years. We served together. We walked through the swamps. You know, he got shot, and he has a a scar in his right shoulder from this 
bullet wound or from an arrow or what, you know, and they tell the, the detail and they tell what color their eyes are and how tall they are. It's, it's kind of interesting. And so there's a lot of stuff out there that you just will be surprised to find as you look, hmm. as you look for letters. I found, I have found telegraph collections in university libraries that, that, you know, you think of a telegraph, isn't that a, a, a letter? You yeah. send it's short and to the point, but oh, there have wow. been collections of those that the telegrapher kept them and they were at the rail station. And at some point in time, they got turned over with the collection. And I've seen them in libraries or museums where those collections come up. Now it's not often, it's not, it's not a regular thing that you find, but you never know what you're going to find until you look. Yeah. And, and it'll hmm. say, you know, this person's coming on the train and they'll be there at this time. And, that's so cool. the family will be there to meet them when they arrive. And it's pretty, you know, it's pretty cool. And then you'll know, well, they were coming from here and they, and now you have another town to go look for more records because they had a family member over there. That's cool. It's like finding someone's journal and reading their diary or journal. And, you know, journals and, di you know, writing journals and keeping a diary was a big deal. I mean, now we have blogs and all of that, but and journaling, you know, a lot of people still do that. but. Uh, back then, keeping a diary was kind of, and letter writing was like a craft, you know, that was part of yes, it was. your education is people how to write paid, a letter. People, if you, if you couldn't write, you, you would have paid someone to write for you. Mm -hmm. That was the only way to communicate. And, you know, we didn't have telephones and we didn't have email and we didn't have Twitter and all this, you know, and so there's much, much out there. Um, hmm. And that people haven't wills? even considered. Because a will is a form oh, yeah. of letter. It's like, I'm not giving you anything. <laughs> 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 they would usually give them, some, they'd give them a penny or something so they could yeah. say that they'd left them something so that the will wouldn't be disputed. They'd leave them, a, you know, like a half a dollar or something. I got so a that. penny today. <laughs> I found a lucky penny. I did. I was in a grocery store. I paid. Okay. You know, you, you know how you do your little self checkout things. No, this is weird. Yeah. So you do your little self checkout. You know, take yeah, take everybody away from their jobs. <laughs> then you pay by credit card, and I paid, and I'm about to leave, and all of a sudden a penny came out of the little change thing. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, who's talking to me up there? What's going on? <laughs> you know. So I got a lucky penny today. That's my letter. I got a letter. Well, good. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> it's like, it's I just, think it's, it's funny. It's hot. I'm like, <laughs> was it a Lincoln? A was it a Lincoln penny with Abraham Lincoln's face on it? It is a, I have it right here. Yes. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's a 1970 Lincoln penny. And he's an important guy. We talk about him a lot. So yeah. there you go. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh boy, that's interesting. You think about it, it's that English mm -hmm. connection, you know, with, with Glenn Burroughs over in England, you know, mm -hmm. living in the ancestral parts. So Lincoln would like us to do another story on him. <laughs> that's what he wants. <laughs> that's what he wants. But yeah, the, you know, to me, this is interesting because the, the letters, I mean, they come in so many different ways. Like you were saying, wills and um, there's, you know, employment, there's the letters. You know, with us doing the Love Your Parks tour, and you've sent us on the mission to go to all the, anything to do with family history, which basically means anything older than, than Nancy and I gets to, gets to be in there Thank on this, <laughs> this travel series. And we're finding all these interesting things. But when you think about letters, um, these ex expeditions, you know, to me, I'd love to read the letters between, you know, Jefferson and uh, Lewis and Clark. You know what I mean? They had these letters going back and forth. Um, They're available. See, yeah. yeah, you can read them online. And and your ancestors could them, be in there. The, yes, and the George Washington papers—they're online. A lot of letters, and they're very fascinating. And it's it's astounding how many common men wrote letters to Congress. You can trace your ancestors through congressional records because the law was important to them, and these guys were were taxpayers, and they they would write letters and it, it's there you can find them it's very cool there's there's you know you think of a letter as just you know somebody writing a letter back and forth love letters come up really 
fast and easy, especially with November, with February on your mind and mm-hmm. Valentine's and all that. But, mm-hmm. but that's just a little tiny drip in the bucket compared to what's really out there and available for us. Hmm. Wow. I never thought about the congressional and, and, ones. Yeah, because you'd write because you couldn't go horseback riding from California to, to D.C., you know, back in the day that fast. Well, unless you were in the Pony Express. Well, that ties into the Pony Express. Check them out with the letters. We're going to be going mm-hmm. there soon. Hey, we might be crossing over through your country. You know, Pony Express went through your area in Utah. You never it know. It sure did. I camped right on the trail. It's fun. Wow. Wow. That's super cool. You think about them carrying the letters. So there's a connection to that, too. It's like, who carried the letters? Think about, you know, the Overland route, the, you know, Butterfield and all of that. Who, who took what mail? I like the telegraph part, too, because that's something we forget about. And then remember, fax, fax, sending faxes became a thing before, e- well, email yeah. was around. I don't remember which came, faxes came first, right? Fax came first, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, but that, you can't keep those. Those never really, that paper. Have you ever used a fax in family history? I mean. Yes, yes. We still use fax, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, I can tell you that some you know, you can track email, you can track if you put anything on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, it can all be tracked, but fax still cannot. And, oh. and there are people who fax things that, that are faxing information out of foreign countries that don't want someone oh. to know what they're doing. Oh. They'll fax it unless it becomes, you know, turned into a digital email, which some fax will do that for you. But you can send a fax. And it prints out on the other side, and that's the only copy there is. You know, the one that the one that was created, and then if you burn it, it's gone. There's not a trace. So, faxes are um, they're still used. We don't hear about it as much as we used to because hmm. everything's so simple. You know, to send a digital document is so. I mean, you know, how easy is it when I send my article? You don't have to wait for it to come in the mail. I don't even I don't even have to send a disc with it on. I just put it in Dropbox and you've got it in one second after I give it to you. It's wow. pretty cool. It hmm. is. It's changed a lot. I wonder how many letters we've written to each other. Oh, I know. This between me and me and you, Lisa. And yeah. how much of my family history is included in there? How do we keep <laughs> because our I emails? told you I'm going to see my daughter or you know, whatever's going on in my family. Sometimes as we're making arrangements for the show, I give you, you know, I'm, I'm well, not planning correspond. to tell you my family history, but it just, it it's just part comes of out because it's, it's what's happening in my life. And as we're, as we're making plans and, you know, you'll know, I mean, one of the shows we did, I was on the mountain camping right and I went and found a spot that I could get signal and I'm just sitting out there in the middle of the sagebrush (laughs) and what about text messages too right yeah exactly there's a lot of a lot of things and so it's interesting the old handwritten letters though they're so they're pretty cool they're pretty cool and then does that go also into people writing poetry and inscriptions and things like that too yeah you'll see you talk about inscriptions they how many times are messages left on tombstones yeah that's see cool. we always and go I've back to those, the graveyard yeah i've seen those capstones where it it's like a cement vault on top of the ground that mm-hmm. holds just one coffin and the whole top tells the story of the person buried inside there i've seen them and they're fabulous, you know. It's it's just a, it's just amazing. I have a friend, a good friend, who lost a child to cancer, and I wrote a, I wrote a little poem as the as we were at the graveside and the, the you know the the flowers that are draped over the coffin at the graveside, a little hummingbird come and fluttered over those yeah. flowers for just a second, and everyone's like, oh, that would just be like. Yeah. She's given us a message that everything's okay, you know. And I wrote mm-hmm. a little poem about this, you know, the hummingbird and the heartbeat, like just like the heartbeat and the hummingbird near. She mm-hmm. brought God's love to those of us here. I mean, it was a little poem, nice. and I gave that to my friend, 
and when she said, you've got to go see the headstone when they got it all put. And I went up and there she had that poem engraved on the back of the headstone. Oh, and cool. so I've always been amazed at that. And I thought, well, I've got my, some of my work has been memorialized in stone. <laughs> you know, it lasts, who knows, forever. But That's such a, that's such a uh, kudos to you, like somebody thought that much, you know, about it. And there it, it just was, it was, it, there, yeah. You know, there's signs in nature, there's signs everywhere about those that we love. And when you see mm-hmm. things that remind you mm-hmm. of someone that's passed on. Yeah. You know, and for me, that little incident there at the graveside reminded me of this sweet little girl. And, you know, we miss her so much, but I just wrote a poem. And I'm not a poet. I don't do that very mm-hmm. often, but I, I, it just kind of came out. Came out. And so. Mm-hmm. We have, we have so much to share with one another and mm-hmm. and you know people write letters like dear abby oh god and they tell so of their family stories i haven't even thought about that for a long time Ooh, but there are editors, letters that are printed letters to the editor in the newspaper Ooh, letters to the letters editor. to the editor there's there's one that the the irish did when they would come over here they would print letters looking for mm-hmm. and other immigrants did it as well looking for their family they'd print letters and have it put it in the paper like here I am yeah. and where are you and and that's how they could connect so there is just so much that if you want to kind of get your brain looking for it you'll find things that you never would have imagined could even be possible it's kind of fun so it is about us being investigators <clears throat> we're family history investigators and don't leave any stone or any leaf unturned right yeah, you know exactly. That's right. Look at that's everything. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got a little cough thing here, but um, I think Local. that's what's what's neat yeah. about it. Sorry, Nancy. I was just going to say, community newspapers. It's got to be a golden source. Yes. Even, mm-hmm. Yeah. To figure out how what it was like at a certain time in history. Well, yeah. they have these little chatty columns that'll say, yeah. you know, so and so had family from. Tuscaloosa to visit mm-hmm. and or they'll say you know the 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 busy bee quilters got together and this person mm-hmm. this person this person this person was there I mean and those are those are little letters that are in the yeah. paper and they tell the story and you know mm-hmm. you'll learn about someone's wedding reception and she wore pink taffeta and they had the you know and sometimes they put the whole list of guests who attended it yeah you just watch for that stuff because it's rich and it really is the the frosting on mm. the family mm. history family history just you know i just don't even like to think about it. it's just a name and a date like okay yeah here's their name and they were born and they died no there's a million things that happened in between that you know the dash there's a little poem mm. out there called the dash that's really fascinating about you know it's so much more than those two dates there's all this stuff that happened in between Exactly. And, and it's like, how many documents have been made that document your life all over the world? Mm. Oh, that's that, a good do you question. think you could track them down, Nancy? Could you go track down everything that's been created oh my gosh. about you? Well, you know what's interesting about, you know, letters? <laughs> well, you know, living in different countries and in Africa and mm. everything. So when we started the tour, we, you know, gave everything away except for our, you know, closest personal items. And it kind of Letters. made us go through all the, you know, the personal papers boxes, you know, are they important? If it's taxes, burn it. No, you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> We're going through things and, you know, Nancy talks about Joy Adamson when she mm-hmm. went to, you know, Elsa, born free Elsa the Lion and all that, um, worked for her in Kenya and in her storage unit, you know, it's sitting there now, it's being, you know, preserved and kept in the right uh, climate control and all that. But is the letter of Joy Adamson writing to Nancy mm-hmm. saying, when you come out, you know, uh, out in Samburu, out in Kenya, in the, in the game ranch area, she's like, well, when you get to the tree, turn left. And you know, there's that joke. Of it's funny you, as heck. And she actually drove, <laughs> drew the tree in the letter. And it's really yep. true. And we have the And the mountain. Letter. And so it's like you pass this mountain, when you get to this tree, you just turn left. And I mean, that's all I got. So that's what I went with. And it took a while, but I got there. 
But it, you know, and I, well. now that we're talking about this, you know, I wonder about how we could have, we should probably go dig that out and preserve it in a better way. Because it's mm. written on that real, th you know, back in the day, we used to get those on onion skin, onion skin, right? Like typing paper. Exactly. And those airplane, mm -hmm. remember those air, air mail letters that you'd get? Yes. It was the cheapest mm -hmm. way for air mail that was, you'd open mm -hmm. it up, one piece yeah. of paper and you'd fold it in. And we have a bunch of those mm -hmm. between our family. And when Nancy lived in Kenya and in South Africa too, and England, yeah. And I'm wondering yeah, about you how should to buy them, those. you know, photocopy, photocopy them and bind them and share them, you know, put them mm -hmm. in a library somewhere. I mean, the more places you share things, then if there's a fire or something happens, you can still have a copy. I just think that's so cool. Oh, that's important. You know, when you think about all the mm -hmm. wildfires going on around the world. Yeah, um, is to have yeah. them in other places, you know, copy them so it's not completely I'm sitting gone. with like 50, 60,000 slides of Kenya over a 20 year period and how the mostly wildlife, but how it changed. Mm -hmm. And, it, right. you know, yeah. I'm thinking I need to do something with it, but that. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It, you're right about maybe libraries, museums, mm -hmm. you know, when we were in Natchitoches mm -hmm. and, and Holly, we're going to get you on a show with them. Um, soon there the uh, the genealogy libraries were two and the one was by cammy henry and and she, mm. you know she kept all these diaries uh, big journals yeah. these huge huge books and you aren't allowed to touch them without doing this with your hands and like there's this whole protocol of how to touch right. the papers mm -hmm. and um right. she she kept the letters to the editors especially she obviously had a sense of humor because anything quirky she kept in that in those books from what we could tell and they were funny yeah what was going on in the town the town <laughs> scandal so and so yeah, selling this <laughs> yeah i mean the old newspapers i really miss old school newspapers community newspapers really do tell the tour the story of the town you know who's selling what you know they do they do. I'm selling my goats, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So it's that's cool. where we go to learn the language of the foreign place. You know, but I've always said, and you've heard me say it before, the past is a foreign place, and the newspapers is where you get the feel. Mm -hmm. You, you, and if they have two papers, they usually have opposing political views, and so you, then you can yeah. weigh one against the other to try to find the middle ground. You know, to what's really mm -hmm. going on, and it's it's very fascinating, but in those newspapers that's where you really find the flavor and the and the life of the of the place is when they talk about the local events and what's happening and you know they'll cover mm -hmm. meetings but they also cover fun things that are happening if they've got um a picnic happening the community picnic yeah yeah church mm -hmm. events um ball games whatever it's, and and they will and they write with enthusiasm, you know, exciting stuff or something I think it's by cool. a snake, you know, you learn about all of that. Well, I'm nosy. So I like, I'll read anybody's mail <laughs> just for like, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not, I wouldn't go t steal it or anything or be nosy in, in a wrong way, but I'm nosy. I want to know what's going on. And so reading people's letters um, to me, it, it's just like, you think about like, you know, when we lived in Tucson, we had this um, black and white photo book, historic photo book. And Tucson and Phoenix have the same thing. And they have these photos of people going out, women, historic photos, in their dresses and the regalia, you know, and umbrellas. <laughs> and they'd right. go out there and have a picnic out in the desert with their little umbrellas. And it was this occasion which people would think you wouldn't be la di da in the desert with your picnic. But they were. Your la di da yeah. by the river and all that, you know, under the oak tree kind of setting, right? You have to bring <laughs> your parasol. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not in the, the sun. <laughs> I know. It's like you can't really sit under the Sonoran cactus or the saguaro cactus, but they were doing all of this. And I'm like looking at this going, wow, you know, they really enjoyed being out of nature at this point. So when you read letters and even see old photographs, you get this feeling of what you know you could be in the harsh rugged landscape a desert landscape but how are you making do how are you handling that and how are you making light of the harsh times as well you know so i think that's that's part right. of that with the letters you're getting this texture of what it was like to live in an era and in an area you know because people right. it is really 
a window into the past. It's, mm. you know, the letters, um, awesome. histories that people wrote, journals and diaries. And you never know if you're looking for journals and diaries, who might be talking about your ancestors. Maybe your ancestor never kept one, but his next door neighbor did. And he spent a lot of time with him. You know, you never know what you're going to find The next door neighbor's like, he never put out his trash on time. No. (laughs) 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 You're going to find something. It's cool. It's really interesting. Thank you so much, Holly. As always, always a fun conversation. We always get some new information. Make us, you know, open our minds further and to keep our eyes more open uh, to clues for our ancestors and to learn more to dig into our family history here. Uh, Everyone, again, don't forget to keep up with Holly at her website. It's familyhistoryexpos.com. She has all kinds of things going on there. You have events. So what's every Tuesday evening, you have what's called Ask the Pros? Ask the Pros. It's it's, uh, Tuesday with Family History Expos, and we ask the pros questions. We'll have somebody there to talk about research, like on the 21st. Our next one will be the 21st. And it's, we're going to be talking about doing research in Illinois. Um, You never know what we're going to talk about. On our website, we have a little area that's called Ask the Pros. If you'll go in there and submit a question, it'll become one of our topics. And we we always try to answer questions and give information to help people with their family history. Mm. And then, of course, we're here every third uh, Friday uh, for our family history show here on Big Blend Radio, which you can keep up with at bigblendradio.com. Another great thing about going to Holly's website, familyhistoryexpos.com. She's got all kinds of materials, books, uh, workshops, right? You've got like, you know, online workshops, mm-hmm. right? And videos to help people, tutorials. And, and what's up with the family history game? We want to play that. We have like a, is it like a well, board it, game? It, um, it is a board game. It's, it's kind of like Clue, Ooh. the game of Clue. So oh, it's cool. a whodunit game and it's 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 fun yeah okay fun. so when we get to your neck of the woods the big salt lake city woods because you're on the outside of there right um can we play what can we take it outside and we'll, we'll go for like a hike you know we all love to be out in nature and play a game a round of it you bet you bet oh, cool. we can do it i like it i like it everyone again It'll thank you fun. for joining us uh we're gonna always you know we love to play music and we have to play this song because we're talking about letters. It's called The Letter, and uh, this is uh, the, uh, a cover of it from Everett Coast. It's from their uh, EP, The Shell Ptolemy Session. So here it is, The Letter. Thank you so much, Holly. Thank you. I'll see you, on, see you again soon ne- next time. Very cool. Next, yeah, next third Friday. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Here it is, The Letter. <laughs> Ticket for an airplane. I ain't got time to take a fast train. Lonely days are gone. I'm coming home. Baby wrote me a letter. I don't care how much money I've gotta spend. I gotta get back to my baby again. Lonely days are gone. I'm coming home. Baby wrote me a letter. She wrote me a letter, said she couldn't live without me no more Listen, mister, can't you see I've gotta get back to my baby once more Anyway Give me a ticket for an airplane I ain't got time to take a fast train Lonely days are gone, I'm coming home Baby wrote me a letter I don't care how much money I've gotta spend I gotta get back to my baby again Lonely days are gone, I'm coming home Baby wrote me a letter She wrote me a letter, said she couldn't live Without me no more
airplane I ain't got time to take a fast train Lonely days are gone, I'm coming home Baby wrote me a letter I don't care how much money I've gotta spend I gotta get back to my baby again Lonely days are gone, I'm coming home 